Depending on who you ask, you either need really expensive camera gear or at least good quality camera gear to be a successful YouTuber. And then some people will say you don't need it. From what most YouTube gurus or t people that are telling you how to grow on YouTube, they'll tell you that you don't need great equipment. In fact, I tell you that in a lot of my videos, but there's something you really gotta understand and, and there's a level of detail to understand to this to make sure that you're making the right choice about if you're gonna get camera equipment or not because I see a lot of issues with people that say, oh, well, I don't need good camera equipment and then their video quality suffers because of it and that does keep them from going on YouTube. So I want to break down some of the issues, some of the things to consider and some things you have to keep in mind if you're going to go with less camera gear and some of the benefits that having better camera gear will provide you. I'm Jesse with Inspire Video Marketing where I show you how to build a YouTube based business. If that is something you're looking to do, subscribe and turn on notifications. The first thing I want you to understand is this. Just because people say you can get by with camera gear that's you know not expensive, you could use your iPhone, like I say this in videos, you can use your iPhone. Yes, you absolutely can. It does not mean that just having that is good enough and you shouldn't put any more thought into it and that your video quality be just fine for YouTube. Now, yes, you, you don't need it to be a Hollywood production. Yes, you don't need it to be in 4K. You don't, like people, like when people are watching a video on YouTube, yes, it's on a small mobile device more often than not. And so because of that, it doesn't have to be the most pristine looking video ever. That being said, just because you're filming with a phone and phones can get good quality right now, doesn't mean you're going to get good quality. And yes, there is a certain level that people expect to see or would like to see on YouTube and there's going to be certain people that are put off if the quality is not good enough and will leave your video. It's just a fact. So instead of like just saying, well, you can use a phone and that's good enough and just glossing it over or saying that, yeah, you can use a phone, but it's not going to look good and saying it's not worth using. It's not that simple. A much better way of looking at this is what do I need to do to make this phone work? And with using a phone, there's a couple things you wanna consider. And yes, there is a little bit of gear I would recommend you get. Doesn't have to be anything too expensive. So if you're going to use your phone, one big thing you've gotta keep in mind too, kind of. The first though, as far as the video quality goes, is how, how is the lighting? Like if the lighting is not coming on your face or at least pretty strong light from the side or above or to the other side, you're gonna have a really low quality video. If you're in a dark room, phones almost always across the board, even the best newest ones typically are just not gonna look very good if you're in a dark room or even just indoors in general if you don't have some good natural light or a ring light of some sort. Some of the things that I'm gonna mention in this video I will have links for down in the description and it's all pretty affordable stuff. Like I don't get really expensive gear for my YouTube setup so I don't think you should either. But that being said, if you can get some you know, sunlight, like right now in the room I have a ring light over here I've got a light, a pretty bright light. We put some really bright light bulbs and all of our light fixtures up above here. So here, here, and then there's also some daylight coming from the window that's right there. So that all kind of provides different sources of light. So now if, you know, I'm using a camera, but if I were to use a smartphone, this would probably be good to go because I got a lot of light coming directly towards my face. One other thing to keep in mind is you don't want the light behind you pointing this way because then you're gonna end up looking like a shadowy figure. But if I were to rely on just the light that I have in the light fixture, it might not be good enough. And there's a good chance it would add a lot of noise to the video if I was using a phone, even if I'm using a camera. Now, the thing to keep in mind with this is a camera, and, and this is where buying gear might make sense, will usually do better in that scenario. Now, even then, like a really expensive camera is gonna typically not do as well with not having good lighting. That being said, if you know how to use your camera properly, and there is a little bit of a learning curve to this, but if you do know how to use it properly, you should get better quality video in a little bit lower light situations than typically you will from a phone. So yes, you don't necessarily need equipment, but it does help, right? So in this scenario, then thinking about that, make sure you get that window open so you got some daylight on and you're not just using the light fixture 
And in a lot of scenarios, I would recommend getting some sort of a secondary light. I like using a ring light, which again, I will have a link for that in the description down below because it's something that's portable. It's easy to set up. You can get them for pretty cheap and it provides some very, very strong, bright light if you want it to. Now, there are other things you could get like soft boxes and umbrella lights, which I have purchased. I just find them bulky and they're usually a little bit more expensive depending on what you get, but they will give you a little bit more even lighting versus a ring light is going to be a a little bit more like psh, direct. It's not just about phone is good enough on the video side. We're gonna talk about audio in a second because that's really important, but it's about the lighting, how you use the phone, how, how you get your footage from that phone. Just because you have a smartphone and thinking it's good enough doesn't mean it's gonna necessarily work in all situations and it's gonna be your a, a good enough option to get good quality video. So you have to put a little more thought into that side of things. One other thing I will say is phones actually are very, very good nowadays with some of the options they offer like offering slow motion footage. I'll use that on my iPhone quite a bit. You can get some pretty good slow motion footage. Thing to keep in mind with that is though, a lot of times the video quality goes down. So yes, you get that high frame rate, which allows it to look smooth in the way it moves. But if you look at the footage, again, there's a little bit more noise to it usually and, and things like that. So the quality does go down slightly. But for most YouTube channels, it's probably passable, probably good enough. Again though, if you've got good lighting, it's really a big factor. Now, the audio side. This is where I feel like besides lighting, most people miss the mark when it comes to like, oh, well, I can just get by with using an iPhone. Sure, you can. But the big problem is when people come to YouTube, almost like every type of video, unless you're doing a video where it's all just about like the video. An example of this would be like, if you're just showing some BMX tricks and you don't need the sound from what you captured on camera, then you'd be good to go. If you're maybe showing some basketball highlights, right? And it's not really about showing the, someone talking and, and the audio mattering as much, then okay, in that instance, you'd be able to get by. But anytime you're talking about someone talking on camera, then the audio quality really, really matters, probably more so than even the video. And this is where a lot of people miss the mark when they're using a phone. A lot of times you'll see people filming with a phone and they'll maybe go in a room like this where it's kind of echoey. Sometimes maybe you'll be in a more public situation where there's other people around, anywhere where, there, where there's music in the background, right? Anywhere where there's other noises, there's a lot of echo in the room, things like that can really ruin the quality of your video and make it difficult to understand what you're saying. And the problem with that is, is if people can't understand the message that you're saying, then people are gonna leave, right? Because at the end of the day, it's the message that they're really coming for, what you're going to be talking about, whether we're talking about entertainment channels, how-to channels, doesn't really matter the niche, news channels, trends, anything. Like, people want to understand what you're saying clearly, and people don't wanna have to work to try to understand you. And if you make them do that, a lot of people will leave and your video will suffer. So that's why you've got to get the audio crystal clear. Now there are some things you can do to help with that, especially again, when I'm saying crystal clear, I mean with you talking and people being able to understand you, or if there's multiple people talking, being able to understand everybody. Okay. So how do you go about fixing this with a smartphone? There's a couple things you can do. You could get some sort of a clip on mic that you can clip onto you and it doesn't necessarily have to be expensive and that can help out a lot. Again, I will have a link for that down in the description. But maybe you don't wanna put the money into buying a clip on mic. Well, I would say if you can do it, it makes sense because it puts the mic right by your phone, but there, or right by your mouth, I should say. But there are some things you could do with your phone or you know anything cheaper that you have that would help. First of all, if you are in a room with a lot of echo, you can put some soft blankets up and things like that to kind of deaden some of the echo. Like in this room right now, I hung over doors, some towels. It's like a cheap way of handling it. Or you could put a blanket or something like that over the doors to kind of eliminate some of the echo. I actually went to school for audio engineering, so I learned a lot about how to do some of these things. And that's all it really takes. Like you, you can literally, I have some pillows here, that kind of helps. I've got, right now I've got a mic above me, but it's pointing down and I'm sitting on a soft couch. I got these soft pillows. So things like that will deaden a lot of the echo in a room. The other thing you can consider is simply just coming close closer to the phone. And what that will do is if it's kind of like putting the mic by by your your mouth, right? If you have a clip on mic, it's a similar effect. I got a shotgun mic right now set up and it's close to my mouth. What that does is it, it makes it so the volume of my actual voice is more direct and close 
and that becomes louder than the echoes that will come in. So yes, like right now I can hear echo coming and bouncing off the walls from the sides of the room coming towards me, but since my mouth is so much closer to the mic, it stands out a lot higher than the level of those echoes, if that makes sense. Might sound kind of weird if you don't know a lot about how audio works and sound, but at the end of the day, being closer to the microphone will help. The problem with that is, if you have your phone and you're putting it right here, that can kind of make it so the video isn't as good and people can't see what's going on behind you nearly as much. And you're kind of losing out on the video side to try to get better audio. That's why, again, having a good mic is definitely helpful for getting good audio quality while at the same time improving the video quality. And then the other thing I would consider with this, and this is kind of a different tangent in a way, but like with your, if you're filming with your phone, a lot of people are probably gonna try to edit with their phone, right? Again, think about how you can get better at understanding how to edit on your phone. Now, I don't cover a lot of that on this channel just because that's not the workflow I typically use. There are channels out there that talk about that stuff. Feel free to link them in the comments if you have one that you've watched that you found helpful, but get better at the editing. That's one of the other things that I see with a lot of channels when they're filming with their phone and they do everything on their phone, the quality of the video suffers because the transitions are kind of weird or things just aren't flowing smoothly and it just kind of gets like people out of the trance when, when you're watching something, right? Usually when you're watching something, you want to suck people into that video and they're watching and they're, and they're super focused on it, right? And some of those little editing issues can kind of take people and kick them out of that trance and now they start looking at other things on, the, on their YouTube app and saying, oh, here's another video I could watch, right? And it just, if, if the experience isn't as good, again, it, it might give people a reason to leave your video. Now, that being said, like the most important thing on YouTube, more than your equipment and the lighting and the audio and, and all that, is the, the quality of what you're delivering to people. And I don't mean the quality as far as the image quality and the audio quality, the message, the entertainment, that sort of things. So if you click this link right here, that video will go over in detail what I think is the best way to come up with really good content as far as what you're delivering to people. Things that people haven't seen before that will impact them, benefit them, all that stuff. Definitely check that out. If this video helped, hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon, and I'll see you in that video next.